Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today, today's video, we're gonna be dealing a bit with the pond. Now, if you guys remember in a previous video, uh, I went and showed you how to recondition a, an old air stone, and that really worked well for what we needed it to do. However, I don't think that was fully the problem. So let's get into it. In the west right now, like where we are, we've been hitting temperatures of oh, well over 40 degrees Celsius every single day. It's absolutely blazing hot and it's very uncharacteristic for us to have those kind of temperatures this early. So getting this pond aerated is going to be much more, very important for not only the health of the pond, but also the fish, the plants, everything. The entire ecosystem depends on it. We use this as our, as our family kind of swimming hole and it's a nice naturalized pond. So we want it to be clean and healthy, not just for the fish and them, but also for the health of me and my family. And uh, we definitely notice without the windmill, windmill running, the stratification of the water temperatures as you go into the layers is really, really, really noticeable. So you can see that a lot of the naturalized plants have started growing. Life in the pond has exploded this year as it does pretty much every spring. We just were not ready for the heat already. The heat that we're having is pretty extreme. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up there. Uh, I've already got my ladder ready. I got some parts on the quad. We're gonna go and take a peek at the windmill. I'm gonna tell you what we're doing. I already have all the parts. I already know what we're gonna be doing. Uh, everything's gonna go, we'll go through it step by step. For those that were concerned, you know, the sexy boat is still here. That's right, sexy boat's still there waiting for a project. There's a goldfish right there. There's tons and tons of goldfish in here. We're getting all sorts of different types of aquatic plants randomly showing up. And apparently some weird bugs. I don't even know what you are. You can go away. But uh, we've got some sort of like feathery red stuff there. I don't even know what it is. This stuff comes back every single year. It grows in about three to five feet of water. So it gives you an idea of how, you know, how expansive that it goes all the way out there and stuff and it just fills the area up. Now normally the shallows and especially in amongst all the, the bulrushes you would see just huge groupings of goldfish. Now the reason this was the first indicator that the well there we are there's some there's some over there but not a lot and the reason being for that is I think is one is really is caused due to the heat the extreme heat so that upper layer the upper two feet of water is very very warm and warmer water does not have the same oxygen holding potential as does cooler water and goldfish Casuarius erratus being a true cold water species it needs a much higher oxygen potential so when it gets too hot those fish go down deeper where it holds more oxygen so we got to get this air stone up and running let's get to it so true to form, every all day long, it's been absolutely no wind whatsoever. The flags in near the house and on the kid's play structure, I've just hung limply on the post and uh, the windmill hasn't moved. I just climbed up the ladder and the swirling blades of doom decided to start moving. <laughs> now, to be able to get to the, di to, to the thing, as I mentioned before, I think what happened, and uh, the gentleman, when I spoke to the gentleman at the place that uh, services these units, and the place is actually, it's an American company called Coenders, that's who builds these. It's actually supplied by a Canadian, can, uh, Canadian company as well. And it's actually just in Regina, Saskatchewan. And I was able to order the parts quick and easy over the phone, and they shipped them pure later, and they're here overnight. So it's quick and easy to do. Now, basically what had happened is, and, and this is why I alluded to this in the other video, and this is what I thought had happened, and I was correct is that by leaving the air stone in the pond that past winter, that line froze solid with water because the temperature dropped. And then that meant there was no place for the air pressure to go down. And I do not have a back pressure valve or anything like that installed. Uh, so basically what's probably happened is we've popped the diaphragm. Now the diaphragm in this unit is no different than something like a diaphragm for say, like an air pump that you'd use for an aquarium. It's just on a much larger scale. So you see all those bolts right there? We've got to take all 12 of those bolts out to be able to access the diaphragm. And let's take a peek at it. 
So here's what I ordered. I ordered the, they call it the deluxe maintenance kit. And it's basically the basic parts that you're gonna to need to be able to replace a diaphragm on any one of these units. So it's kind of like the same thing if you were to order one for an aquarium kit. While I was ordering stuff, I thought in the event that my muriatic acid treatment didn't actually do the job that I wanted it to do fully, I decided to order an extra air stone and at the same time ordered an extra foot valve, which in case there was some pressure and stuff like that, this is a good thing to have on hand. It, it was a cheaper part. Air stone's about a hundred bucks. This is about a $30 part. And then the maintenance kit, I think it was about a hundred bucks. But this is the diaphragm. <laughs> to give you an idea. Now you guys just saw it up top there. It is a very, very large, very, very thick diaphragm. It feels like something made out of a tire, but uh, it's very, very well made. So we've got that and then we've got a couple of little parts here. So we're gonna get up top there. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off all those bolts in that head. That we were just up there, all those 12 bolts on the top, the lid will just pop off, and then we'll be able to access and change this out quick. To remove those uh, 12 bolts, basically it's just using a half inch chuck in my drill. We're just gonna pop it off quick. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm standing directly right beside it right now, and I can hear the diaphragm inside, and it sounds like a somebody with a little bit of throat congestion. Pretty safe to say that that was exactly the cause of it. This diaphragm is completely disintegrated. Yeah. Just look at the difference. So this is the old one. I'm sure you couldn't have guessed that on your own. And that's the new one. Old, new. Old, new. Old, new. Here's part one installed, new diaphragm, new valve. Next we get the cover on. Now we have the head fully installed and honestly it sounds different already. If we give, if we had some wind, here I'll give you an example. Now you can definitely hear the difference. And if you look down there, there's the black hose that comes out and it sits there, right there. You'll notice, even if I give just a little bit of pressure to it, you can see air and bubbles coming out the other end. So I believe we have solved the issue. Now I don't think there's anything wrong with the foot valve. It's in good shape. There's no issues with it whatsoever. And the air stone, this is the old air stone, the one that we cleaned up, and it looks pretty much brand new. So we're just gonna install that on the foot valve. It's very easy to do. You just thread it onto there. Chuck it in the pond. Let's see if we can make some wind with this thing, even though it's not moving at all, because it's absolutely still here today. Let's see if we can get some air. So I've gone and tossed the thing in. I didn't bother bringing a tripod out. So I've gone and tossed the line in. It's buried underground to about there. So it comes all the way from here, buried underground all the way to there. And then I have all that free cable. So it's sitting in the middle of that tangle of that stuff there. Let's see if we can get some uh, air going here. There we go. Look at that. So we know now that we have solved the issue. Look at that glorious air. So there you have it, my friends. From about 15 feet up in the air on the windmill, we got some air. We got some bubbles going in the pond. That means we've solved every problem today. So now it's Miller time. <laughs> so thank you as always, my friends, for watching. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Take care.